The Karamoja region is located in northeastern Uganda. Karamoja region borders with the Republic of Kenya in the east and that of South Sudan in the north, while internally it borders Acholi sub-region in the west, Quen district and Teso region in the south and southeast respectively. The region comprises of seven districts, namely Nakapiripirit, Amudat, Moroto, Abim, Kotido, Kabong, and Napak. The poverty rate stands at 61% today and literacy at 32%. However, Karamoja is still the region with the highest poverty rate and where 80% of the households rely heavily on low productivity subsistence agriculture. Under the sub 3, this disaster risk program is helping to prepare for the risks before the droughts and the, to make sure that the people can have something to eat when the droughts come. So the, the Reserve 3 program is helping the people first of all to realize that they can produce food themselves. Secondly, we have the labor intensive programs where people are doing some public works like public roads which are supposed to be done by government, community roads, uh, water sources like sandy dams and valley dams which are supposed to be done by government. In the past, government used to hire contractors to do this. But now we get the people of Karamoja themselves, their various communities. They do some work which benefits them, but it's supposed to be done by government, and they are paid. NUSAF 3 is designed to assist the targeted poor communities of northern Uganda to transit to sustainable livelihoods. NUSAF 3 project development objective is to provide effective income support and to build the resilience of poor and vulnerable households in northern Uganda. In 2016-2017, 4.11 million US dollars was approved and provided for disaster risk financing in Karamoja through the World Bank. These resources provided assistance to 31,386 people. Beneficiaries from their earnings spent 6.5 billion to smoothen consumption and 2.8 billion shillings were realized in savings for beneficiaries. During 2017-2018, 2.6 million US dollars was presented and is expected to provide assistance to 20,388 people. So this is really a confirmation to us that if we approach disasters, especially drought in this case, through a disaster risk financing modality, we are likely to produce a more resilient Ugandan population, but also a productive society, which will continue to consume, but also to contribute to the domestic uh, resources that we attain as a country and to the national income. In year one, 2016-2017, 14 billion Uganda shillings was triggered for Karamoja and it supported 31,441 beneficiaries. Instead of providing people with relief food, we provide them with cash. But they are required to identify some activities within their own community, which is for their own good. For example, they can rehabilitate a road, a community road. They can prepare large gardens in a group for themselves to plant next season. They can rehabilitate a water tank, valley tank. They can rehabilitate a, a dam, water dam. So now they are paid for man hours because it is uh, labor intensive. So they are paid for the man hours they invest in their own project. At the end of the day, DRF increases productivity. These people will participate in public works, uh, which are, are in about five categories, soil and water conservation, in agriculture and production, uh, in access roads, um, 
in valley dams and accessing water. And we hope that through these projects, they will be able to earn a living, a decent living, and also be able to take care of their families. But continuously, they will also be able to change in terms of their attitude to work and in order uh, for them to be able to build a more resilient community. The National Emergency Coordination Center was established in October 2014. The NECOC is a 24-hour, seven days a week central facility for early warning dissemination and coordination of emergency and crisis response and recovery action. NECOC is responsible for the effective coordination and networking of various emergency response institutions of government. The NECOC implements the Disaster Risk Financing DRF subcomponent in Karamoja by collecting analyzing and storing risk-related information on incidents of drought, major disaster considered for the DRF. The primary indicator for whether DRF should be triggered within Karamoja is based on the Normalized Digital Vegetation Index, NDVI, which is freely available from various remote sensing sources online. A monthly NDVI analysis is performed during the crop growing season by NECOC. We started DRF uh, whereby we thought it was going to be a pilot program, but so far we have managed to trigger financing using the information collected by NECOC. We have triggered financing twice. And this is information that the community has relied on to carry out labor intensive public works. In Kotido District, Panyangara Sub-County, Porokutia Watershed, the communities of Okamuru Loposo Sub-County and Kumuru Parish were mobilized and sensitized. Ten projects were generated, of which five were under labor-intensive public works and five under disaster risk financing. They saw the bath over to Kumu Nasari Bed that resulted into the planting of these trees. Under the Mogose tree planting, so far they started with fencing. They fenced the site. It's actually a wood lot. Then they went into measuring and pitting. Then uh, putting off manure into those pits, planting. And now they are fi okay. They are finished planting. They are planted all those tree seedlings, and it's uh, it's around twelve thousand tree seedlings that they have planted so far, and they are doing well. This home is for Lokwang Peter, one of the beneficiaries of Namagosi tree planting. He was the kind of man who would follow all the five core values of health, education and sanitation, which is evident at his homestead. The tree planting project taught them new technologies like k apple fencing, which conserves the environment and reduces the chances of drought. <laughs> Located in Loketo Parish is Panyangara Primary School with most of the children coming from humble backgrounds. The primary six class is in session. Longoth Catherine is one of the pupils. I'm a teacher teaching P6 class where uh, a child called Longo Catherine is. And Longo Catherine is a child who always comes to school and she frequents, in fact, she doesn't miss lessons. And here, even when she, we are teaching morning lessons, as long as she's present, but the challenge is, to some extent, uh, you find that the parents are unable to pay her because uh, how to get uh, the body fees is a challenge to, to the parents of Longo Kathari. So that's the major issue where uh, most of these children in their class uh, and uh, even to get a uh, body fees for a right is a challenge. So otherwise, academically, the girl is uh, average and even, in fact, she does, uh, her performance is okay. It is through the labor-intensive public works and disaster risk financing that Lokwang Peter has been able to take his children to school and provide medical care. Peter, the father to Longoth Catherine, collects her early from school in order for her to receive her medication since she had attended the day's lessons when sick. 
At Nakapeli Moru Sub County, the 85 beneficiaries of Lorio Block Farm, Patongor Village, received their payment. I'm Loshkiri Meligan Grace. I'm a lady local artisan. I help the community members to, to, to mobilize them during work time. I help them in taking up the registers and to and to write reports at time to the sub county. Under the access road, we had 272 beneficiaries. Then the trainers are we had 200 beneficiaries. Then the block, the current block farm, we have 85 beneficiaries who are going to receive money right now. What is going on here? These people they are going to receive their payment. They have worked for for 10 days. They are going to get that money. 10 days is 40,000. They get 5,500 in a day. The, the one five is is saving. Then they will get 4,000 cash per day worked. It, this little money they get is some some of it they use it for saving. They have their small boxes. Some money they use it for buying soap, beans in the households. And some of and some some people they help their children buy small books and pencil for their children. NOSA three allocated seventeen million Uganda shillings to Kopadur Extraction, a community interest group. The community procured 10 oxen and 5 ox plows together with curry sites, which they used to plow individual gardens. One of the Kopodur community interest group member owns this magnificent block farm known as Diok Garden, seated on a six acre piece of land. <laughs> Outputs of DRF, 179 DRF sub-projects funded in year 1, 123 sub-projects in year 2. 31,441 beneficiaries, of which 13,114 were males and 18,327 were females, benefited in one year. 23,388 households are estimated to benefit in year two. Uganda shilling 7 billion was earned from DRF sub-projects in 2017. Uganda shillings 2 billion savings were realized by beneficiaries from working on DRF sub-projects. The district has been able to generate disaster risk financing sub-projects. For the financial year 2016-2017, we were able to generate uh, 45 sub-projects. And the communities were supported with a, a tune of about 3, 3 billion, 190 million shillings. And out of this money, 70% was paid as wages to the communities. And this is the money that is meant to address issues of household needs, issues of um, school, issues of health, and actually improving their households' incomes.